One of the missing pieces of the puzzle for organisations moving from on-premise to cloud was LAPS, the um, the local admin password solution. So this was an on-prem tool that allowed you to randomize the password of every local admin account on all of your devices in the organization. And it would set this to a unique, strong, complex um, password. And this would rotate on a schedule every seven or so days. And so this helped with two things. Firstly, the password was long and complex and hard to crack in the first place. And secondly, it wasn't possible to reuse that password within the organization to move laterally around once you had cracked that password if you if you were able to. Um, and so with Azure AD devices, there's, there's no supported LAPS solution which will do the same kind of thing. And there are arguments from some in, in, in the community say you don't really need LAPS for Azure AD devices, but there are many organizations who would like to maintain the same level of functionality they've got with LAPS when they move to the cloud. So the team at MSM Point Manager, uh, the community team at MSM Point Manager, have put together an incredible solution called Cloud Laps Community Edition, and I'm going to go through that today. So you'll find full documentation for this and incredibly detailed documentation, I must say, on this at the MSM Point Manager website, which I'll show you in a second. And what the team have tried to do here to differentiate themselves from other solutions that are trying to do this is that it creates a web-based portal that any delegated admin can log into if they've got the correct permissions, can log into to grab that LAPS password and issue it out to an end user or use it locally on the machine that they need to, which is pretty much exactly what LAPS used to do on-premise or still does on-premise for on-premise orgs. So it's essentially a, um, a completely Azure-based solution which will replicate LAPS. And so if you head to msnpointmanager.com forward slash cloud laps you get to this website here and essentially this is a really detailed set of instructions for doing this so right at the top there we've got the diagram which goes through how it's meant to look and how it's all integrated and working and then if we scroll down a little bit you'll see that we've got um, the the core set of components within it and then the setup guide so we're going to start with this we're going to start with the prerequisites which is that you need azure active directory um, obviously, and you need to have a certain level of permissions in order to, to use that. So uh, listed in the in in the docs, it says you need application administrator or cloud application administrator for creating the Azure AD app registration. Um, for my demonstration that I'm going to be doing today, I'll be using a global admin, but you know the minimum level of permission that you'd need for this is, is, is listed there. So you also need an Azure subscription. So whilst this is a free solution provided in the community by, by the, this fantastic team, it's, um, it's licensed under MIT, so that means it's very, very simple licensing. It is free to use for everyone, uh, even commercial organizations, to, to use and resell. Now, as long as as long as the uh, the license is maintained throughout the use of this uh, product, so you you always have to have the MIT license distribution in there. But otherwise, it's perfectly safe to use. So it's free, but there may be a cost to the Azure side of things. So you need this Azure sub, which is um, is listed there, and you're going to need permissions to the resource group that you're putting all of these components into in order to be able to to use it. So let's jump straight in and create the Azure app registration. So I'll put all of these links into the into the description with the time that I'm going through them so you can pick that up and make sure you're, you, you're following along if you want to. So from your Azure portal, straight into Azure Active Directory and then down to App Registrations. And then it's a case of clicking New Registration and typing in a name that makes sense. So the suggestion here from the MS Endpoint Manager team is to use something like Cloud Labs Portal. And this obviously is gonna be unique within your organization, uh, hopefully. It doesn't have to be globally unique, so that's it's fine to use something as generic as Cloud Labs Portal if that's what you want to use, copying the documentation that you've got. There are some fields in this documentation that you must, you must make sure are globally unique and don't try to use the examples that the team have provided. So yeah, I'm gonna go with Cloud Labs Portal. So let's go with that. And uh, it's gonna be only in my tenant so that's great so in the redirection uri we want to choose web and then give it localhost and then we're going to choose register what we want to do here is make a note of this application client id just copy that to the clipboard and then we can move on to the next step so the next step for me is to deploy cloud Labs to azure so you'll see that if you go to the to the website i'll link this link 
in the description below. You can click on the Deploy to Azure button and it should do all of this uh, templated deployment for you. So this is where all the deployment stuff is going to take place and we need to make sure we get this right because this is going to only going to happen once. So we're going to choose a, a, a name it, within my organization for the resource group. So we're going to go with Cloud Labs for me and uh, region. So for me it's, it's set to UK South by default but obviously choose the region which is most appropriate for your organization and, and, and where all these um, these components are going to sit in Azure. We need that application ID that we took from the previous screen and then we need to give it a name. So this name needs to be globally unique within Azure. So um, let's give it a name. So I'm going to go with GM Cloud Labs Function App. And again, the portal web app name needs to be unique within Azure as well. So we're going to go with Cloud App, GM Cloud Labs uh, Portal. Now you'll see that the uh, Plan SKU has been set by default for you. These will have a cost associated with them if you choose the default. So please be sure to take a look at what that will be and make sure that it's appropriate for your organization. Uh, for the key vault name, I'm going to go with uh, GM Cloud Labs Key Vault. And then similarly for the Log Analytics Workspace, I'm choosing Labs Workspace. Okay, so that's pretty much it. We just need to click review and create and let it go away and create that configuration in Azure for us. So now that de the deployment is complete, it's just a case of doing some final configuration in the portal. So we just need to grab the, uh, the application URL from the portal. So we'll just wait for this to load. On the right hand side there you can see it's got this portal URL and we need to place this in the authentication section of the the Azure AD app registration we created earlier on so if we go back to Azure AD and then over to app registrations and find that Cloud Labs portal I showed you earlier on and we need to go into uh, manage and then authentication so here you can see we have this uh, local host that we set it to earlier on we need to use this URL that we just created that we just copied sorry and then also add in this sign in dash OIDC. Now this is all specified in the documentation. I've not come up with that off the top of my head. So when you when you are doing this, refer to the documentation and make sure you get this right. Similarly, we've got a very uh, simple thing to change on the sign out URL as well, which is the front channel logout URL. And it's very simple. Thank you to the guys for making that nice and simple. Um, it's sign out OIDC, so that's great. And then at the end there, we've got the ID tokens. We need to choose a tick on that. And then we just click Save. Now, there is one other thing we need to do before we can get started. We need to delegate access for the Function app to be able to do stuff within Azure. So um, essentially, we need to run a script. And uh, we're going to grab that script from the GitHub. So that's this one here. Just head over to that. And you can see it's a very, very simple script. Um, well, short script is not necessarily simple. Uh, and we're just going to put that into uh, a new file for us so that we can start using that. So I'll just copy that into VS Code. And you can see at the top there we've got assign static variables. So we need to change these variables. So it's a case of um, going over to our uh, portal and grabbing, we need the tenant ID first. So back over to get modern and uh, there's the tenant ID just there couldn't see that for a sec put that into there and we also need the object ID for the function app back over to our app registrations pretty quickest to go to the resource groups for me and find cloud laps um, we've got the function app here and I need the identity object ID so there it is there, I'm going to copy that and paste it into here and then that's that. So I'm going to save that in um, my folder here and there we go. Okay, so the next step would be to run that. We're go I've already got the, um, the Azure AD module installed but you would do this in order to install the module. I've already got it so I don't need to 
but we're going to do this script here and it should once you've allowed it to run once it should go away and create the necessary permissions in Azure for this to work once you've signed in of course so we'll do some signing in and there you go that's all done brilliant so now it's just a case of testing that the portal can be accessed so for me I'm going to go to my resource group again and find that portal URL uh, which is so cloud Labs portal and then the portal URL should pop up over here somewhere there it is so I'm going to click on that and see whether we can get to it now there's nothing listed in the um, documentation about this particular screen but I'm going to consent on behalf of my organization and hopefully that will do what we need it to do and that's it okay great so we've got the MS Endpoint Manager logo there which I believe can be changed we will take a look at that later on and we've got a home button the search button which would allow us to search for a computer name I assume um, physical devices specify the serial number and for virtual devices specify the computer name uh, it's a lovely simple website isn't it that's great okay so yeah let's um, move on to the next step so for the next bit what the team have done is used proactive remediations to do the password changes on a on a regular basis which is a fantastic way to do it so we're going to take a look at that now we need, we need to run a couple of scripts or, or specify a couple of scripts to be able to make that work so let's take a look in our um, documentation you can see we've got um, the github link to the proactive remediation script so we'll head there and then we'll see what we need to do so we'll take a look at each of these scripts then so we've got one here called detection I'm just going to grab all of this uh, code and put it into Visual Studio Code and take a look at it yeah save that in the same place I think it's called detect and then we'll do the same for uh, the other one called remediate a little bit longer this one and there we go so we've got those two scripts so it simply says that you um, you need to download the script, which is what we've just done, technically. And um, Remediate needs to be modified slightly, so let's take a look at what we need to do there. So, according to the documentation, we need to go to the Function app. So, in my resource group, we'll grab the Function app. And here we're going to go to Functions, and then Set Secret. And then we've got Get Function URL. So we're going to grab that, and this, which you can't see because it's uh, Azure masked, but you, this is a, a URL, so we're going to grab that. And then in the remediation script, at line uh, 239, 239, here we need to enter the uh, URI of the function app. And we also need to specify the name of the local admin account, which for me is local admin. Now using a, a, a local admin name, something as simple as local admin, in most environments is is a big no-no because if it's easy to guess what the local admin is then it'll be easy to crack the password but with an elapsed managed scenario that's not such a big deal because even if they manage to guess what the local admin is which is very easy to figure out um, it's very difficult for them to crack the password and even if as I said at the beginning even if they do crack the password that's not just a big deal because they've only got into one computer not the entire organization so uh, just to call out um, if you don't have the local admin that you specified in this remediation script configured that will be created by the remediation script so there's no need to um, to pre-configure all of those and just a, a huge call out to Nikolai and thank you for taking the time to review this video before it went live to point out that I'd made a mistake with the, the local admin there so it will be created if it doesn't exist so we're just going to save this script and then we just head over to endpoint manager so that is at endpoint.microsoft.com so we're going to go into reports and then endpoint analytics and then we've got a section here called proactive remediations and uh, you need obviously you need specific licensing for this so it's a case of checking whether you uh, or the organization have access to this licensing at the moment so windows 10 or 11 enterprise e3 um, or microsoft 365 e3 or e5 um, for this demonstration I do have Microsoft 365 E3 in this tenant so I'm going to go ahead and choose to confirm the license we need to create a script package so that's the first thing I want to click so in the custom scripts section we're just going to give it a name the suggestion is 
that we call it Cloud Labs Client and uh, give it next and then we're going to choose our detection script which is this one here and the remediation script which is this one here. We need to make sure this is running in 64-bit uh, PowerShell but the rest of these can be set to no. I'm not using scope tags in this environment environment but I do have a group of users that I want to, a group of devices that I want to test this on which is obviously the recommendation that you test this in a pilot before you go ahead with your production rollout and I've got a group called cloud laps pilot devices here and the schedule should be set to daily according to the documentation it needs to be set to daily so I'm going to keep it with that setting for now then we just choose next and create so that is technically all you need to do to get this set up in a pilot, except local admin passwords are quite sensitive. They're, they're a security sensitive piece of information. So what we what the suggestion is from MS Endpoint Manager is to lock it down a little bit. I'm going to show you that. So if we take a look at our um, enterprise application, so if we go to uh, Azure AD, enterprise applications you should see the application that we registered for me it's called cloud Labs portal so I'll click that and then we want to lock it down so that only the right people can access this environment so in the property section we'll scroll down a little bit and you'll see it says user assignment required I'm going to tick yes and save that and then we're going to specify the users that are allowed to use this environment for me I only have my um, my global admin set specified already, but I do have a user who I'll be using to demonstrate the um, the admin experience other than me, which is Alex Wilbur. So we'll just choose him and then specify that there. So that is all you need to do to get this up and running. I haven't tested this yet. Obviously, that's the next step. And in the next video, we'll go through testing it to see whether it works and whether it modifies the local admin password for my uh, for my local admin user. And we'll go through all that. I'd like to say, obviously, thank you so much to the to the, the people at MS Endpoint Manager who've put this all together for us and written that fantastically clear documentation. It's very easy to follow. If you have found any issues or found any errors within that documentation or within the, the tool itself, please don't post them here. Then the guys aren't going to be looking here for, for that kind of information. Just go to the GitHub repo, which is specified in the in the description below, and post the issue there because it'll be certainly picked up and almost certainly fixed much quicker than if you mention it on YouTube. But thank you for watching. Please look out for the next video where I'm going to demonstrate how this all works and what it looks like from an end user and admin perspective when we're gathering those local admin passwords from computers. But again, thank you for watching. Please hit the like button, and I'll see you next time.